three heavy space vehicles are being developed by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration under the project name Saturn. The largest Saturn vehicle, designated Saturn V, consists of three stages. The S1C, using five F1 engines, the S2 with five J2 engines, and the S4B using a single J2 engine, plus the vehicle instrument unit, and the Apollo spacecraft, which Saturn V will carry. This second quarterly film report will cover progress on the Saturn V vehicle during February, March, and April 1963, highlighting major effort concentrated in areas of final tooling preparation and initiation of fabrication. An important step in development of Saturn V's S1C stage, represented here by a 120th scale cutaway model, was worked during this report period on fabrication of bulkhead components for the liquid oxygen and fuel tanks. The initial bulkhead gore segments were formed in early February by the Military Aircraft Systems Division of the Boeing Company at Wichita, Kansas. Heavy rollers first press sheets of aluminum alloy to the approximate required contour. Gore segments are made in two sections, base and apex, later welded together. The rolled sections are then placed in this large bulge form die for final precision shaping through use of liquid pressure in a rubber bladder. Water is forced into the bladder by a pump. As the bladder expands, it forms the aluminum against a plastic liner at a maximum of 1,500 pounds of pressure per square inch. Upon delivery to the Marshall Center, gore segments are first heat treated or aged in a large oven for 24 hours at 325 degrees Fahrenheit to increase their strength and hardness before they undergo the fabrication and assembly processes which will result in a finished bulkhead. Marshall's bulkhead fabrication and assembly tooling underwent continued buildup and qualification during the report period, with work also underway on the first bulkhead, which will be part of a structural test fuel tank. This initial station in the bulkhead assembly line performs routing and welding for all gore fittings. The second tooling fixture trims the top edge of the base and the bottom edge of the apex of each gore segment in order to make a joint to weld the two pieces together. At the third station, this gore welding fixture is used to join the gore's base and apex portions. Mounted over a pit, the welding platform can be tilted 30 degrees since it is desirable to weld uphill at all times. At the fourth station, a meridian edge gore trim fixture is employed to perform the job of trimming the gore segments lengthwise. At station number five, gores are installed on the bulkhead welding and assembly fixture where four operations take place, meridian weld, bulkhead base trim, bulkhead to Y-ring weld, and Y-ring to skin weld. Two gore segments have been successfully welded together in the qualification operation. Eight gore welding for the first bulkhead is scheduled next quarter. Installation of the final station, number six, was completed during the report period. Check out of the fixture, which will weld in the bulkhead closure plate, is underway. The S1C stage partial tail section mock-up has been moved into Marshall's newly completed mock-up building from the adjoining shop where it was fabricated. After further build-up, the unit will be installed on its four support posts during the next report period and the full-scale F1 engine mock-up will be attached. Manual gimballing tests of the F1 mock-up have been performed to evaluate design of flame curtains, compression compensation, and cable installation. 
A one-eighth scale model S1C liquid oxygen tank is being used at Marshall to study LOX flow characteristics and to develop efficient anti-vortex devices such as baffles, screens, and standpipes. For testing, the tank is filled with water with dye added to enhance engineering photography. A rotating paddle is used to simulate vortexing, which might be caused by vehicle movements in flight, thus preventing sufficient LOX supply to engines. Construction of Marshall's Saturn V test facilities, such as this hydrostatic test and vertical assembly building, Basic construction of the reinforced concrete blockhouse or control center some 250 yards from the stand has been completed and interior work is progressing to accommodate the electronic test equipment which will later be installed. The instrumentation tunnel running between the blockhouse and test stand is complete and ready for installation of cables. A 40-foot deep excavation for Marshall's F1 single-engine static test stand has been finished and preparations have begun for pouring the foundation. A contract was awarded in February for construction of the 105-foot tall concrete superstructure. The west side of Marshall's S1 stage static test stand is now being modified to test F1 engines. This will allow start of F1 tests in November several months earlier than scheduled. The position will be converted back to S1 testing after completion of Marshall's F1 test stand. A new series of experiments in rocket sounds was begun at Marshall this quarter using a new and larger horn replacing one which was moved to Marshall's Mississippi test operations. The huge horn which simulates the noise of a Saturn static firing is being used to learn more about the transmission of this low frequency sound and to determine the most advantageous conditions for conducting static firings from the meteorological viewpoint. Experiments in partially suppressing the noise of Saturn firings are also being conducted at the center by firing a small engine into a specially constructed water tank. Microphones set up on a semicircle of 16 poles near the tank record sound levels during firing. Various deflector, cone, and baffle devices inside the water tank help to dissipate the energy which creates the noise. The tape recorded sound is later analyzed by technicians to determine the effectiveness of suppression. A new jet impingement test facility was placed in operation this quarter to study the feasibility of launching space vehicles directly over a large body of water. Small solid propellant motors are presently being used in tests. Later, F1 models will be fired singly and in clusters. The stand is designed for up to 50,000 pounds thrust. Its platform can be varied from zero to 10 feet above water surface. Portholes in the tank allow for photographic instrumentation. The tank is 51 feet in diameter, 24 feet deep, and holds 350,000 gallons of water. Splash effects, jet penetration depths, and effects of underwater deflectors will be studied. At the Boeing Company plant in Seattle, Washington, Dynamic calibration tests using a 3 100 scale Saturn V model were performed this quarter. An electrical shaker device with rod attachment induced vibration under controlled frequencies and amplitudes. The same model with weight suspended to introduce linear deflection was also used in static calibration tests to measure vehicle bending moments. A 1 20th scale model equipped with two receiving antennas was used in command destruct antenna pattern measurements to determine vehicle aspect angles over which the destruct signal can be received. 